The ride type, commonly called the slingshot, may be one of the most dangerous ride types of all time, with new accidents happening every year. Simultaneously, slingshot rides are some of the safest rides out there, with loads of redundant safety features and fail-safes. How is this possible? Well, the ride commonly called a slingshot can actually be broken down into two distinct ride types. The first type is actually called the reverse bungee ride. These are extremely dangerous and regularly experience several high profile accidents each year. The second type is actually called the slingshot and is a very safe ride with only a few minor accidents ever being recorded. Let's look at the design and background of these two rides to see what has resulted in them being so different despite looking so similar. Reverse bungee rides were invented in the late 1970s as a way for the public to experience the thrills of bungee jumping in a more accessible format. The ride works by having a rider capsule connected to the ground by a mechanical hook or electromagnet. Two towers are located to the side of the capsule that extend to a height between 100 feet or 30 meters and 250 feet or 76 meters. Connecting the capsule to the towers is a part elastic band, part steel cable. The elastic band section of the device is usually less than half the length of the distance between the capsule and the top of the towers. The steel cable section of the device stretches up through the top of the towers and into an electric winch. When the rider capsule is loaded and ready for launch, the hook or electromagnet will hold the capsule and riders to the ground while the winches pull the steel cable into the towers. At full tension, the elastic band will be stretched to reach from the rider capsule to nearly the top of the towers. The ride starts by the hook or electromagnet being released. This causes the elastic bands to contract like a rubber band, sending riders into the air and leading them to bounce erratically. Once the bouncing has subsided, the electric winches will release the steel cable, allowing the rider capsule to slowly lower back to the starting position. This design is prone to multiple failures. One of the most prominent is the failure of the elastic section of the cables. As anyone who has played with a rubber band can tell you, elastic can only be stretched so many times before weakening. Most elastic segments on these rides are only rated for between 200 and 300 launches before they should be replaced. If an owner fails to do this, or if a manufacturer defect is present in the elastic, it can fail while riders are on board. When this happens, segments of elastic are sent flying near the riders, and if a rider capsule has been released, it can be sent flying into one of the ride's towers. Ride operators nearby also run the risk of being hit by the broken band or by the capsule. Some manufacturers have tried to remedy this by adding a second band to each side of the rider capsule. This has had limited success, as oftentimes band snaps release so much energy that they destroy the band next to them. Secondary elastic bands can also be easily overwhelmed and snap after suddenly having to bear the full weight of the rider capsule while in motion. Band snaps are not the only issue faced by this ride type though. In units where two electric winches are used, there's a risk of one winch not tensioning while the other does. This can result in the capsule flying into the opposite tower, much like if a cable were to snap. These rides are also quite simple in design, leading to less experienced manufacturers creating them. This has resulted in inadequate restraint devices, especially on older models. The ride's simplicity also lends itself to less experienced owners who may not take the best care of the ride or operate it in the most responsible way. The Slingshot ride model stands in contrast to all these problems. Made by one manufacturer, the Austrian company Funtime, these rides look nearly identical to a reverse bungee ride at a distance. The ride consists of a rider capsule secured to the ground with an electromagnet with a mechanical backup lock and two towers ranging in height from 100 feet or 30 meters to 250 feet or 106 meters. But that's where the similarities end between the two rides. The slingshot features no elastic bands. Instead, it uses a pair of steel cables on each side of the rider capsule. These cables run through pulleys at the top of the towers. They then run all the way down the tower and into a spring box located near the base of the ride. All of the potential energy stored for the ride to operate is contained within this box. Inside, there are tens of industrial strength springs in a relaxed position while the ride is loading and unloading. When the ride is ready to start and the riders are loaded into the rider capsule, the operator starts a hydraulic pump that allows a large hydraulic arm to pull the springs in the spring box to their maximum stretched position.
At this time, the rider capsule will be facing the sky. Once the springs are fully tensioned, the operator represses a button, releasing the mechanical backup lock and then the electromagnet. This causes the rider capsule to be shot into the air as the springs rapidly try to return to the relaxed position. The weight of the bouncing rider capsule pulls on the springs, allowing the capsule to bounce several times. Once the capsule's bouncing has subsided, the operator will lower the springs in their relaxed position back to the starting position, allowing the capsule to slowly return to the ground. Though much safer than the reverse bungee, the slingshot is still prone to a few small issues. For example, the springs in the spring box may occasionally break, but if this happens, there is no risk to riders. With so many remaining springs, there's no risk of all the energy being released at once, and the entire broken spring is contained within the spring box, far away from riders. There is a risk of the steel cables snapping occasionally, especially if they become excessively tangled due to high winds. If a cable snaps, the capsule may move to one side, but with a second steel cable in place on each side, there's little risk of a complete failure like what happens on a reverse bungee. Instead, there's a risk of the rider capsule being stuck in an awkward position. The restraints on new slingshots are hydraulic restraints with seat sensors that communicate to the ride's control system when in the park position. They can only be unlocked by an operator physically plugging in an electric cable to the back of the rider capsule. Older versions of the ride featured a five-point harness with a simple over-the-shoulder restraint. The safety of the Funtime Slingshot has prompted several permanent and large-scale parks to add the rides, which have proven to be just as safe as their design claims to be. The easiest way to tell the difference between these two rides is to look for a spring box. If you don't see one, you may want to reconsider riding. Though many believe that elastic slingshots or reverse bungee rides provide a more thrilling ride experience than a fun time spring box slingshot, is the extra thrill worth it for you? Be sure to check out this video covering every slingshot ride type accident. Do you think there's a ride type more unsafe than the elastic slingshot that we should talk about next? Thanks for watching and see you next time.